What we're going to go through in this video is just Blackboard stuff, not really super important compared to what we uh, went through uh, in the past couple of videos, but then I guess the most important thing would be the alternatives, alternatives to the market. So without further ado, let's just kick it off. So when the market is inefficient, can one of the non-market methods of allocation do a better job? And that's the question we are trying to answer. And remember the met methods of allocation are uh, what we went through in one of the uh, earliest videos for this chapter. Now, uh, now majority rule is often used to improve the allocation of resources. So majority rule is used a lot. Now, majority rule also have its own uh, shortcomings or cons. A group that pursues the self-interest of its members can become the majority, and this occurs a lot in government. Uh, for me, living in Canada, this would be probably liberals, conservatives, Green Party, uh, that kind of thing. An example of uh, majority rule not working as well as we expect is uh, the price or quantity regulation that creates inefficiency. Uh, this is almost always the result of self-interest groups the self-interested group becoming the majority and imposing cost on minority. So now that we've got uh, through the, the idea that majority rule uh, is not always the best, let's, let's look at some other ones. So the first come first serve uh, works best in some cases. For example, an ATM, but again, uh, this uh, first come first serve method, method is not exactly uh, scalable to be used in every situation. So there is no one efficient mechanism that allocates all resources efficiently. So what uh, people actually do is, or markets, what markets actually do is they supplement uh, by using other mechanisms, such as majority rule, command system, first come first serve. Uh, they just put all, all those methods all in one, and that actually does uh, a better job than we expect. And that's what we markets uh, use. Now the second blackboard, uh, what I wanna, the question I wanna ponder is, is the competitive market fair? Now uh, let's think about the situation when natural disaster strikes. Now when the na when natural disaster strikes, the price of essential necessities or uh, essential items such as food, water, shelter, they jump. The prices jump because the demand and willingness to pay by these people in uh, in this situation. Uh, has increased but supply hasn't changed at all so then higher prices achieve an effective allocation of scarce resources uh, this is what we get from this example now when slow skilled people work for wage that is below what is what most regard as a living wage then it is employers that are taking unfair advantage of their works and that is not really important I don't know why it's there but it was just in my notes and I just thought I mentioned it uh, economists agree about efficiency, and that is uh, what I mean is economists agree uh, to the idea of making the pie as big as possible and at, a, at the lowest cost possible, but one thing they do not agree on is equity. Now equity or fairness are not exclusively economic ideas, so uh, what I was taught is that economies don't like none of that hippie shit. So, all ideas are f of fairness can be divided into two groups. They dumped it into two groups. And these two groups are, it's not fair if the results isn't fair, and it's not fair if the rules aren't fair. And these are two things that we will go through in the next couple of videos. Other than that, uh, yeah, this video, we're just gonna, we just went through some Blackboard uh, material. Uh, not really something that would be directly tested. I suggest that you keep what we talked about in this video in the edges of your mind just give it a, a once a once watch and um yeah uh, uh, please rate comment subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you guys next time for the ideas of fairness thanks for watching